Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the basic instruments uh, required for VFR flight, so visual flight rules, and uh, how to interpret them. Uh, this is going to be done using this Cessna 172 aircraft uh, that we'll be flying today. So here's the aircraft. So to start off, I'd like to start talking about the, tach the tachometer. So the tachometer, the tach is this instrument down here and it basically shows the engine RPM in hundreds of RPM. So right now I throttled that idle so our engine RPM is uh, just at 500. So if we increase the throttle you can see the RPM going up to a maximum power setting of around 2200 RPM. So this is our takeoff power setting and our climb power setting because in the Cessna 172 we don't have a lot of power so we always climb at full throttle. So if we release the brakes we can see we start moving forward. And the next instrument I'd like to talk to you about is the airspeed indicator. So this indicator shows our airspeed in knots. Uh, it's our indicated airspeed which is measured with the pitot-static system. So the pitot tube is a little tube in front of the wing and it collects dynamic pressure depending on the speed that we're moving forward. Now the static port's a little port on the side of the airplane. Now the pitot static system measures the difference between this dynamic pressure in the pitot tube and the static pressure on the port on the side of the airplane and converts that to our indicated airspeed which is displayed on the airspeed indicator in knots. Uh, this, these airspeeds are very important because uh, we use them for climbing, for cruising and descending. So the airspeed indicator is one of the most important instruments for sure and uh, there's different ranges of it. So right now we're flying in what's called the green arc. So as you can see there's green labeling on the instrument's face. So that means we're in the normal operating speed range for the airplane. Now if we were to speed up we would go into the yellow arc which would be the operating range only in smooth air. So we wouldn't want to be in this range if we had turbulence. Now the red hash mark at the end of the instrument shows that basically the never speed never exceeds speed. So if we cross this speed, we would be going too fast and we could stress the aircraft and cause serious structural damage. So now we're just going to level off here, reduce the power a bit. And the next instrument I want to talk to you about is the attitude indicator. So the attitude indicator shows um, our reference relative to the horizon. So basically, if you look at the instrument, we have a little airplane that we're looking at from the back. So this is the nose and these are the wings. And the white line is the horizon. So as you can see, our nose is on the horizon and our wings are parallel with the horizon. So we're flying straight and level. Our altitude isn't changing and our heading is constant. So if we were to pitch up, you could see the nose actually going up into the blue and our altitude starts going up. If we look outside, we see that we're in a nose-up attitude. If we were to pitch down, the opposite happens. So we see the nose going down into the brown. We look outside, lots of ground, no sky, and our altitude's going down. So back to cruise. We could also bank. So if we bank to the left, you could see the left wing going down, the right wing going up, and we're turning to the left. If you look outside, you could confirm that we are in fact turning to the left. Roll back to cruise. And now we'll go into a climbing right bank. As you can see, nose above the horizon, right wing down, left wing up, and we're turning to the right. So that's the attitude indicator. It's very useful, especially when you can't see the horizon and you have no visual reference with it. The next instrument I want to talk to you about is the altimeter. So the altimeter basically displays our altitude above sea level. So it does this by displaying it with two needles a thicker shorter needle and a thinner longer needle. So the thicker shorter needle displays our altitude in thousands of feet. So as you can see now we're in between the one and the two so we're at about um, between one and two thousand. The thin long needle displays our altitude in hundreds of feet. So as you can see this needle is pointing to about between six and seven hundred feet. So if we add one thousand plus about 650, we're at 1,650 feet thereabouts above sea level. Now, the way that this instrument works is that 
we have a little subscale here on the right. So as you can see, the subscale is showing 29.92, which is basically the standard pressure. Now this subscale displays the pressure of the air outside in inches of mercury. So our standard atmospheric pressure on a normal day is 29 or 9 or 2 inches of mercury. Now this pressure obviously changes with different weather patterns and meteorological conditions. So it's important to set the pressure, the correct pressure obtained from the airport forecast or the weather forecast before takeoff, during flight, and before landing. So this pressure could be set by turning this knob here and tuning in the right pressure. Now when we tune the pressure higher, if the pressure is getting better, for example on a sunny day, our altimeter actually displays a higher altitude. If we tune the pressure lower, it displays a lower altitude. So this would be an example of what we would do on a rainy day when rain is approaching. So that's the altimeter. It just shows us our altitude above sea level. The next instrument I want to talk to you about is the vertical speed indicator. So the vertical speed indicator shows us the change in our rate of climb or rate of descent. So basically, if we now are flying in a cruise attitude, straight and level, so it's showing zero. If we go into nose up attitude, it shows that we're climbing. So it shows that we're climbing at about or 500 feet per minute. So this instrument is used to basically time our climb. So if we're climbing at 500 feet per minute, it's going to take us one minute to climb 500 feet or two minutes to climb a thousand feet. Similarly, if we pitch the nose down, we could see that now we're descending at about 500, 600 feet per minute. So if we're descending at 500 feet per minute, once again, one minute for 500 feet two minutes for a thousand feet. Now this instrument does lag a bit on abrupt attitude changes because it does take a while for the pressure inside the instrument to equalize and that's why the um, airspeed indicator actually gives a better indication of attitude changes than the vertical speed indicator. So moving on, the next instrument that's of importance is the heading indicator. So located right below the attitude indicator, the heading indicator shows our heading between basically north um, all the way to 359 degrees so it shows the 360 degrees of our heading so as you can see now we're heading at about a heading of uh, 265 so just almost west if we were to turn right our heading indicator would start increasing so turning right we could see our heading indicator is increasing we're turning towards the north we're passing through a 290 at 300 we could level the wings and now we're flying at a heading of about 300 degrees. So that's basically um, showing us a very accurate representation of the direction that we're flying. If we turn left, heading indicator decreases, going back towards west, we could level the wings, roll out on a westerly heading. So this is very accurate and it's used by ATC when they assign our headings, they're expecting us to fly using the heading indicator. Now the heading indicator needs to be set to the magnetic compass right here before takeoff, before landing and every 15 minutes in flight due to internal frictions and the rotation of the earth, it could become inaccurate. So to set the heading indicator, simply just look at the compass. So we see about the heading of west, so we could turn it a bit to the right and we pu push this knob and turn it until our heading indicator matches our compass. So this should be done every 15 minutes. The next instrument I want to talk to you about is the turn coordinator. So the turn coordinator displays our uh, turn and bank information. So it displays the angle of bank and whether our turn is coordinated. So if we turn to the left, you could see the instrument uh, swinging to the left. So wing to the left, ball wing to the left, right wing up. We are turning to the left. Now the ball's in the middle. The ball shows whether the turn's coordinated. So whether the centrifugal and centripetal forces are balanced out. So we always want to fly a coordinated turn, so we want to make sure the ball's in the middle. So if the ball's not in the middle, we want to step on the rudder in the direction of the ball. So for example, if the ball is to the left, we would want to step on the left rudder to get the ball in the middle. If the ball is to the right, we would step on the right rudder to get the ball in the middle. So it's very important to coordinate the turns using rudder to fly a nice coordinated turn without slipping or skidding. The thing I want to talk to you about are the two hash marks, the left 
and the right here. So what these two hash marks indicate are our rate of turn. So it's a standard rate one turn if we're flying on the hash mark. So if we turn to the left, we're doing a standard rate one turn to the left. This basically indicates that we're going to turn 180 degrees in one minute or 360 degrees in two minutes. So we're going to turn a full circle in two minutes. This is very useful because we could actually time these turns and they're very predictable and ATC always wants us to do rate one turns when they're signing us a heading because they know exactly what we're going to be doing. Now the rate one turn, um, every airplane has one. Faster airplanes have a steeper angle bank for a rate one turn um, than solar airplanes, but every airplane can fly a rate one turn. So this is just a rate one turn to the left. It's very important to stay coordinated in the rate one turn uh, to ensure that we are in fact turning um, at the specific rate that is required. So those are the main instruments in the six pack. Now I just quickly want to talk about a few more instruments about our aircraft performance. So the fuel quantity gauges are pretty self-explanatory. We have two fuel tanks on this plane, one on the left wing, one on the right wing. And we're showing about 26 gallons in each, so they're pretty much full, 52 gallons in total. The gauge below it shows us our oil temperature and pressure. So these gauges, we always want them to be in the green. We want to especially check them on our takeoff roll. And if they're not in the green, we want to abort our takeoff. This is very important because if they're not in the green, we have, for example, high oil temperature and oil pressure. It could mean of an imminent engine failure. And that's not a situation that anyone wants to be in. So it's always good to monitor these gauges once in a while. Uh, the gauge to the right of that is the suction and the ammeter gauge. So the suction gauge displays uh, the suction pressure of the vacuum pump. So the vacuum pump is used to power the attitude indicator and the heading indicator. So if that's not working, if this gauge isn't in the green, it means that our vacuum is our, our vacuum pump is not working and the attitude indicator and heading indicator are unreliable. The needle to the right of that is the ammeter, so that shows whether our alternator is charging properly and whether the battery has enough charge uh, in maintaining a correct electrical load. So that's basically all I want to talk about. Um, all these instruments that I mentioned are what we need to fly in visual flight rules. Uh, if you master all of the instruments and you have a good scan, you'll have no problem later learning instrument flight rules. So these are the basics in visual flight rules. Just remember that we always still want to look outside for our references and we just want to use the instruments to cross-reference our attitudes and movements and our airspeeds and our altitudes. Um, but our main reference is to the outside world. Thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe and check out my website.